Now, before some of y'all knock the look, I just want to point out that your WWE Universal Champion wears crap like this to the ring. At least mine's name brand, brother. At least mine's name brand. Oh, and by the way, completely random mini rant here. For all the fucking people in the business that want to talk about fans living in their mother's basement. I wore this shit because after I got off of work, you know, a job unlike professional wrestling that actually provides me things like, you know, a 401k plan um, actually helps pay half of my social security tax. And, oh, here's a good one, provides health insurance at a relatively reasonable premium price, mind you. I have to go out there and mow the yard, you know, because I have a house, unlike a lot of the wrestling people that have to live in crappy studio apartments. So eat shit. I guess I'm rocking the Kevin Owens look, whatever the fuck. All right. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Let's get to this Q&A. Cricket Sam 64 is kicking us off today. Oh, it's a politics one. Oh, God. All right. What are your views on Gary Johnson and Jill Stein? <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Jill Stein may be a doctor, but she's not somebody at the doctor level in terms of having a fucking clue of the bigger picture of things and what improvements could actually be made to make the country better. I'm not a huge fan of hers. I don't hate her like I would a Trump or a Hillary. I just don't like her. Gary Johnson I want to like, but you know my problem with him is the same thing as four years ago. I feel like a guy... He's a guy that kind of runs for the presidency because he can, and he's looking for something to do, but he doesn't seem to really want to be president. I also think he kind of leaves in a naive bullshit bubble of being a former two-term Republican governor in New Mexico, talking about all the things he did that, on a state level, you can potentially do. You could potentially cut taxes, yet improve investment in infrastructure and in the schools and so on and so forth. You know, we forget about the subsidizing that comes from the federal government and all the things that are left at the federal government's doorstep that the state doesn't have to fucking worry about. You know, when states have to start paying out the Social Security benefits that the federal government does, then let's start talking. So he kind of lives in this naive bullshit world, and no, I won't be voting for him. I would have liked to have seen him at least get enough support in the polls to been able to get into the debates, because maybe having a third person there would have deflected some of the other bullshit. We could have gotten a little more serious about things, but alas, we didn't. Uh, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, two more people I will not be voting for come November 8th. There you go. Uh, Matt Mefe 2, who goes in the Hall of Fame first? Sid's leg, <laughs> Vince's quads, <laughs> Triple H's quads, Nash's quad, or Sin Cara's patella tendon? <laughs> you know, you might have... <laughs> Sick. Who, by the way, would be the biggest star in the fucking company today. And if you don't believe me, you can kiss Sami Zayn's Syrian ass crack and eat shit because it's true. Fuck your Finn Balors and your Kevin Owenses and all these other people. Psycho Sid would rule. Sid's like, <laughs> gotta go. As long as Johnny Ace is inducting him, and Scott Steiner says, I've done the math, <laughs> and your two broken legs, plus your three broken feet, <laughs> means you have no chance. And I want a rematch. Now that, that's Hall of Fame stuff. Vince's quads have to be a close second because not only did he pop both of his quads getting into a, into a ring at the 2005 Royal Rumble, didn't he just smash up another, tear up another quad with lifted weights? Fucking 71-year-old dude trying to clang and bang like he's 25. Idiot. Then you get what exactly what the fuck you deserve there. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. And then how long do you see Owens and Styles as champions? Mm. Styles might make it to Mania. Uh, Kevin Owens probably does not. But that's not a guarantee either. Um... American Ghoul 98, what was the last WWE official merch and live show that you've been to? And what are your thoughts on Apollo Crews? Apollo Crews is a guy without a chance right now because he has no fucking gimmick. And he has no chance. 
has absolutely no chance. Last official merch that I bought, I think a while back I went to, uh, what the fuck was the store's name? Uh, DSW Warehouse or something. I don't remember what the name of the store was. But they had a bunch of WWE shirts for like a dollar to five dollars. So that's the merch question. And the live show's got to be years. I'm talking about like 2002. It's been a long time. Uh, Humongous. SSR361. With that name, you know he has to ask me a rip snorter of a question. He asks, you dated black women. Why? Let's change the tense of the wording there. I date black women. I currently live with a black woman. I have dated black women the past decade and a half. You ask me why. Now some of the brothers watching are going to know, number one, black don't crack. Look at some of these women as they get into white women, they get into their 30s and then into their 40s and all the makeup and shit that they've worn on their face over the years, and you look at a black woman, you know, the black woman's face doesn't change that much because, again, black don't crack. Uh, the white woman's face... <laughs> you know, so I, sometimes you'll hear the things, like a lot of black women, like older white men. I'm 35 pounds, like a bend the older white men category. But, you know, we don't age typically as terribly as white women do, in part because we don't put as many chemicals on our face, so in relation to white women, we look like gods. Um, there's all types of different reasons, you know, and for some of the black men watching, you know, it's just one more white woman that they could have, you know, and this is my thing, it's like, a, it's a social justice type of deal. If everybody fucked with somebody from another race, Two or three generations later, we're all the same. We have no more problems, right? Right, right, right. Which is beyond ridiculous anyways, because for all of you that ever have questioned why I would sit there and say I am a black man, let's take this from a twofold approach. Number one, <clears throat> if you believe in the theory of creation and that we are all descended from Adam and Eve and we feel like the Garden of Eden maybe was in Africa, that all make us Africans? Wouldn't that make us all be related? Wouldn't that mean there's a possibility that Adam and Eve were also black? Black man! Now let's take a look on the flip side. Let's say we believe in the theory of evolution. And that means that we would have all had to evolve from one common starting point. And we believe the cradle of motherfucking civilization was Africa. That would, again, make me an African. Black man! So no matter what I win, you can eat my shit. No. You, you ask that question though, like it's a repulsive thing. You ever dated a black woman? Just say, give it a shot. You might like it. You might like it. I'm just saying. They're crazy though. That's why a lot of black men date white women. Some black women are crazy. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> they will let the title. I think so. <laughs> All right, moving on before I get myself in too much trouble. Michael Corvin, will the OTRS podcast ever make a return? I really enjoyed the few shows that you did before you stopped doing them. Yeah, who knows? Maybe at some point in time. But honestly, I've got to get interested enough in the product again to where I'd want to devote enough time to doing a podcast. I will say, though, I enjoyed doing the podcast. It was a lot of fun. I love being able to take calls and interviewing people. Well, that shit's a blast. If I could get the same type of audience doing that as I do this, then I would do that over this in a second. In a second. So much more fun. Uh, Callum Burgess asked a question. No, no, no. You dick. I specifically said no Dolph Ziggler related questions. I almost have gotten to the point where if <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler wasn't such an awesome, incredible thing, then I would fer refer to Dolph Ziggler forever as uh, the suspect she who shall not be named. And yes, I said that right. But I'm not answering your goddamn Dolph Ziggler question. Uh, Andrew Harrington, when do you see NXT champion Shinsuke Nakamura coming up to the main roster? 
I get a sense that he would maybe be a night after WrestleMania 33 guy. Just just a guess. Uh, A Vargas 067 has the real political event of 2016 already occurred this year and Hogan politicking his way to 200 million. <laughs> you know, you, you look at the pros and cons from Hogan. A lot of people lose respect for you because you said some really bad racist shit in the past, which, frankly, probably now, looking back, should have qualified him to run on the Republican ticket for president of the United States, um, versus winning a big, huge amount of money in a lawsuit against Cocker. I mean, let's face it, with you white or black, you won $140 million. Do you really give a fuck what a lot of people think of you? Really? I don't know. I just hit the fucking golf course every day and probably tried to lobby to get the rules changed to where, you know, it was like in the Constitution. It'd be like the 28th Amendment that Serena Williams had to marry me and have 10 of my babies. I don't know. And you, you ask me why, Serena Williams. Do you need to fucking ask? This is about as stupid as when women fucking ask a guy. Why are you so into two women kissing each other? When they're hot women... Kind of fucking tells the story itself, doesn't it? I mean, what a stupid fucking question. Why do you encourage me to go, go, go do stuff with girls? Why the fuck wouldn't I? It's not a dingling touching you. And even if it is, it's rubber. It's not the same. You'd hope to God it's not shooting any babies up in there, anyways. <laughs> Girl Longest Ward, is being able to apply baby oil to create a wrestler in WWE 2K17 the best thing ever? That's that. <laughs> I sound like Muttley there for a second. Is that real? Can you really <laughs> lather up yourself in baby oil? <laughs> or has that position already been filled by Chase Oliver? Oh! <laughs> His buzzards. Sorry if this is too personal, but have you ever thought of getting married and having kids? I think a lot of y'all know by now, I would hope, for some of you that probably paid attention to me almost six years now, that uh, I don't, I usually all this personal shit I'll answer. I don't care. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I'll say that's personal. I don't give a shit. Maybe there are certain things I won't talk about or give full details to, and that's understandable, but in general, yeah, shit like that, I have a kid. I don't gotta see her. But I got one. I do. Nine years old. Can you believe that? I mean, uh, you know, getting married, yeah. Having, making more babies. Oh, well, you goddamn right. I'm trying to make as many Obamas as possible. <laughs> uh, Joseph, I'm free. Um, but yes, yes, I have. Yes, I have to answer your question. Hey, don't be afraid to ask that shit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Or what's the worst thing I'm going to do? Tell you no. Yeah, I usually don't. Um, let's see here. Moving on, moving on. Uh, WWE stage creator, when it's close to the Royal Rumble, can you book a realistic Royal Rumble match that should happen or you think will happen? I may do one booking video sometime here in the next couple of months. You just have to wait and see what it is. I know what it is, but I'm not going to tell you yet. Uh, Tasty Waffles, will WWE legitimately sell out the Alamo Dome at the Royal Rumble this time? It depends on your perspective of legitimately selling it out. You know... Do they get 60-plus thousand people there? Perhaps. Um, do they have to give away a lot of those tickets, comp a lot of those tickets, sell those tickets for 5 or 10 bucks to maybe fill it up? Perhaps. That's technically selling it out. You know, and even with the comps, you know, I've talked about that in another video. Um, <clears throat> I think they can. I think it's a little more challenging to create a more difficult situation for themselves, but I think they can. Um, Ryan Steele asks, why should fans care about TV ratings, attendance figures, pay-per-view buy rates, etc., etc., and pro wrestling? This really harkens back to the Monday Night Wars. This is a way for a lot of people to justify why they supported or watched one product or the other. And, you know, it was something the companies talked about and pounded down our throats. The wrestlers, the bookers, everybody pounded down our throats. So, you know, whether it should really matter or not, it does. It's just, it's kind of a, the wrestling culture that we're in today, frankly. Um, yeah, so I think it's a fair question that you ask, but that's why it's become a part of our culture. Um, let's see here. Uh, the Pope Nav, how appalled are you that the true MJ story of Space Jam will be exploited as a work of fiction with LeBron? 
Michael Jordan stepped away from basketball for a year and a half. Not to play baseball. No, no, no! Don't you buy that MSM mainstream media bullshit. He selflessly allowed Hakeem Olajuwon to win two championships by going to save the universe from the basketball playing aliens called the Monstars. For Christ's sakes, they had the powers of Muggsy Bows and Sean Bradley. Who's LeBron going to take the fucking powers? Who are the Monstars going to take the powers of this time and LeBron's going to have to face? Dwight Howard? Oh, it comes down to a free throw contest. I wonder how the fuck this is going to turn out. Hey, shit. There's only one greatest movie ever, only one greatest documentary in the history of Everness, and it is Space Jam. There's only one man that saved the universe from a basketball playing, Sean Bradley power stealing alien monster led team, and that was Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Greatest movie ever. LeBron can eat shit. And in fact, that's it. That's got me pissed off. Space Jam 2. The fuck's next? People are going to try and tell me Michael Jordan played for the Washington Wizards. You might hear some conspiracy, some British fucks like Daniel Parkin. Don't buy that shit. Getting his fucking bootleg ass bullshit, thick ass jerseys from the goddamn Guinness store in downtown Peterborough. Fuck off. I can't believe that. Make a droid play baseball. Never happened. Michael Jordan played for the Wizards. Eat shit! Thanks for sending your questions later.